I naturally am a little goofy and off. I want people to know the bigger story than like, oh, you're on TV and you live an awesome life because right. it's actually been a really rough road. He has the desire and the calling to share what he has experienced to help others in what they're going through. I had a lot of death in my family. I lost um, like four or five people I loved in a couple years span. Romans 8.28 says he works all things for the good in those according to, according to his purpose that love him. So if, if that's true, then what is good? What is good in this? Is what I would, I would literally be like, all right, this doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I can tell you right now, by looking at Grant McCarthy, he's out, of, he's out of gas right now. He's on pure fumes of determination right now. Yeah, you try to visit him. Oh, can he say yes? I had so much going for me and none of it mattered. I was just very hurt. But God so clearly came to me there and just reminded me that He'll never leave me or forsake me and was with me in a tangible way. I want people to know that God is equivalent goodness in the sad moments where I, I woke up and I was like, God, this hurts, I don't understand this, but you are good. And when I hit a buzzer and I say, this is amazing, look at all these people cheering and whatever, and I go, God, you are good. Those are equivalent. He is equally as good in both. No problem with the warp wall. There's that smile. When I was a little kid, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was my favorite cartoon. Well, guess what? I have the next best thing even better. Grant McCartney, the American Ninja Warrior. Grant, pleasure to meet you, man. Meet you too, man. Thank you for being here with us, dude. Yeah. So tell us, how did you become an American Ninja Warrior? Yeah, um, so the show is originally called Sasuke in Japan. It's like a show I used to watch as a kid growing up for years. And I remember watching it and thinking like, I could do that, I could do that, like a lot of people do. And, um, and then one year I saw these American gymna gymnasts go there and do it and I thought, oh whoa, Americans actually can do this. I'm gonna do that one day. And uh, I just kind of put it in my mind, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. And then uh, years later, uh, in college, I remember making a little video as a joke with my brother saying we were gonna both do it when I found out there was an American version. I was gonna submit it and do it, and I never did. I just made that silly video and I never applied because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and then, you know, I, 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 there's a period of time where I had a lot of death in my family. I lost um, like four or five people I loved in a couple years span. Uh, my mom passed, my grandmother, followed by my other grandmother and my stepdad oh my gosh. and so with all that loss I kind of was like all right life's really short I'm gonna go do these things I've always wanted to do and American Ninja Warrior was the second thing on the list of things to do so wow. I did it my name is Cindy Dorflinger and I know Grant because um, through the skate community because my son was a competitive skater and Grant was at most of those competitions probably as a judge because he's a sponsored skateboarder Grant came over quite a bit for game nights and he's quite, as you know, quite competitive even at a board game. He, at that point, he just really hit it off with my husband and it just, he became part of the family pretty much at that point.
So tell me about yourself, Grant. Tell me about yeah. your life. So I grew up in Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, born and raised there. Uh, my family was divorced when I was young, probably, I don't know, six or so. Always kind of lived knowing that, you know. Um, but I have an amazing dad. He's always been there. He's just solid, uh, great example. Um, and it's just weird because he never knew his dad. So for him to be such a good dad is so weird, but I love it. I just, I, as I get older, I just really appreciate that. Um, and I had a great mom for a really long time. She was, uh, she was wonderful. I never didn't feel loved by her. She was an artist. She was creative. I, I, I make slam poetries and, and I create things because of her because she instilled that ability to create because literally she would come home one day and go, you know what? Um, I think I'm gonna paint something and she painted a big window on our living room wall that looked out to a castle We all visited one time and then wow. one day she just painted like a, a duck hanging upside down Like it had just been killed and was ready to be butchered in our kitchen to eat and it's on our you know Our pantry door and she just she'd run away with these ideas and, and it was beautiful to watch her do those things so then I grew up in that uh, the kind of split environment where I go both homes and um, And uh, I was involved in you know a youth group, which was really fun for me when I was a kid. I liked youth group. We had a good time. We goofed off and it, it was good because it wasn't surrounded by with my friends outside of it. I, I'd been skateboarding my whole life. I grew up uh, being a sponsored skateboard for over 10 years and you know I go to skate parks and everybody's smoking weed or doing whatever and it, it always felt like that was like its own thing that people want to do and it, it, it took away from the fact that I was there to skate. I was like what why would we go smoke when we could just skate like we we could do what we came to do and and youth groups and stuff kind of got that same idea. There wasn't the idea of what well, we're going to use or do whatever here. We're just here to play or we're just here to worship or we're just here to learn. And, and so I liked it. I always enjoyed it. I love my church. And so I had some older youth guys or leaders that would kind of pour into my life that would hang out with me. And man, I was wild. And we, they, man, we had some of the stuff we did. I look back and think, gosh, they would definitely get fired from their church if, if they knew what we all did for fun. And it, we, it was a blast. They'd open the gym. We'd have dodgeball, whatever. Youth leadership, man. It's a crazy animal. <laughs> it is. It is. And so I get older. Um, I in high school um, is when I, my sophomore year was when I decided to believe. I decided on my own that I was like, you know, I've been watching this, but I'm going to do this on my own. And and it was at a camp and I remember that was also the same time that God gave me the importance of worship like immediately worship changed it was like these moments of just heavy tears and like the realization of what I'm doing and just deepness in that and so it kind of changed that environment but if I had to say anything about my entire upbringing even to now is God's always had grace around my life my good decisions my bad decisions um, there's always been this big protecting shield of grace and I've always known it and I attribute that to maybe people praying for me my whole life that I didn't even know they were praying for me and I still try to figure out why it's there. He lives life with a desire to bring God glory and to, to testify what God has done in his life through some very difficult times through a you know just a challenging childhood and and even into adulthood, just facing some, you know, just heartbreaking tragedies in his life. And, and yet, God is his firm foundation, you know, and, and he built his life upon that foundation. I got into high school and I'm glad I had that foundation started then because my junior and senior year of high school things kind of took a bit of a turn where my mom got remarried my uh, freshman year. She had my brother. My mom and stepdad started to use a bit more. She had some total knee surgeries, had to have some um, drugs she used for that. Mm. My stepdad um, also was using alcohol and different drugs and they it kind of built. And um, there was kind of this big moment with me and my stepdad where it kind of just things really fell apart where I recognized him as like, he's not my dad, but I'm gonna try to love him in that. And I was young and I was a mouthy teenager too, don't get me wrong, but one day he came into my room and was getting mad at me about some dishes left up and uh, we got in a big argument and I, I went to my room and I thought, you know what, I'm being mature today. I'm gonna tell him what's up. Like, I'm gonna say, you know what, I should respect you and da 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 and uh, you know, I built up all this hope. He comes in there and I was like, you know, Scott, like, I just want you to know, and I, I did not say it eloquently, I'm sure. It was, I'm sure it was just like, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I respect you, uh. And I just finished with, you know what, ultimately, I, I love you. I want you to know that. And I remember just, it was me going, okay, 
I did, I did my part. I know that I, I should respect you. I know that I do want to, I choose to love you in this. And, and he followed back with immediately just saying, I don't love you. And I remember thinking, why would anyone ever say that? Why would you ever choose that route? Why would you just miss the good that could have happened? The good that could have came from that, you just missed it. And uh, it caused a big fallout. I moved out, I moved to my dad's. Um, that was kind of the downfall. And it, you know, they were using drugs and alcohol at the time and they continued to get worse. Different rehabs in and out. My mom started to show up at a lot of my events, drunk or high. Um, I'd make the state finals and then like, I would bomb it because all I could think about is like, what is she going to do in the crowd? Is everyone noticing? And I couldn't compete and uh, and do well because I, all I could think about was her. And you know, um, Easter or Mother's Day were just the worst times. And things continue to kind of get worse there for a while. Um, then in college, I decided to move back in with my mom to try to help her with that drug use. I thought if I was around, she would not drink, maybe use less. Um, it was getting really bad, and. I, Maybe I shouldn't have, I don't know, but I was there and I, I was trying to live with her and one day I was cleaning my car and she yelled for me and I heard it, but I was like, ah, oh, it's probably nothing and I just kept cleaning my car and I heard her yell for me again and I was like, okay, she's yelling for me and then all of a sudden my grandfather pulled up and my grandfather and her were not speaking so I knew something wasn't well mm -hmm. and uh, I went inside and I found her in my living room. She had, um, she had cut both of her wrists and she was she was bleeding and, and just crying and I thought, I was so mad, I was so angry to think, this isn't right, no one should ever have to see this, no, no kid should ever have to see their mom like this and that moment was really important for me because it was one of those moments where nothing else mattered, where I left and uh, we took her to the hospital, we checked her in the psych ward and I had time alone in my car afterwards, I remember putting my head down on my steering wheel. In the quiet of my car, and just thinking nothing mattered, nothing was important. None of my sports, I was involved in so many sports. I was involved, I was doing well in school. I had so many friends, I had so much going for me and none of it mattered. I was just very hurt, and um, but God so clearly came to me there and just reminded me that He'll never leave me or forsake me and was with me in a tangible way. I felt Him there in the car saying, just hold on, it's not, this isn't it. And um, that's the moments that I want people to know. I want people to have those. I want people to, in their low moments, to realize that's not it. Um, and I, you know, I don't know if someone's not a believer, does God still go to them in that? I don't know what those moments like look like, but sometimes he doesn't come swooping in always. Maybe it's something you have to choose to believe he's there. Or remember that, you know, just because you don't feel him doesn't mean he's not present because he will never leave you. I was in college and, um, and I needed to, I decided to step away for a little while. After all that pain and hurt, I, I thought, you know what, I'm going to go take care of myself a bit. And I decided to come to Hawaii as something I always wanted to learn to surf and, and, um, and skate. And so I went to UH Manoa as a year as an exchange program. And I was fortunate enough to win a contest series here in Hawaii. Um, 808 Skate in Kailua uh, asked me to come move back after college and skate for them. And, um, and it was an easy decision to uh, move back here and uh, started my life here, kind of apart from everything. And I just got a call from some random person I don't know. And they just said, your mom's dead. And that's, that was all I heard. And luckily I have friends that feel like family here that could come and come to my house right away. It was four in the morning, um, went there and you know, uh, my grandmother was dealing with cancer at the time, and I think that loss caused her to kind of give up as well. You know, it, it was obvious that he was hurting, and uh, I think he had just lost his grandmother. And, and then, it, and when the first time he came to the house, the, he saw some of the teacups that I have in the kitchen, some antique teacups, and he pulled up a picture on his phone to show me his grandmother's teacup and how special that was to him. So he's, family is very important to Grant, and he's just a, a loyal individual, and um, I'm grateful that we were able to find, provide a family environment for him when he was without a family. I, you know, and I love what you're doing, Grant, because you're, you're 
you're doing amazing things and, and a lot of people, I know a lot of kids, look up to you and see what you're doing and then to know the background of your story and to see you pushing through and, and pressing on to do these things, I mean, what an amazing testimony of, of God in your life to, to show and say, even though in the midst of these tragedies, mm -hmm. You can press forward. You yeah. can, there's hope. There's God has has plans for the future. Yeah. Uh, that's inspiring, man. I want people to know that because, like, there's verses that I've heard or I've studied or whatever that literally come true that have, have I've lived out in my life mm. um, through this journey. I, I remember waking up in tears because I was crying in my sleep, which I didn't even know you could do. Mm. Just mourning about my mom, just upset and sad. And I wake up and I would pray first thing and I go, God, this cannot be what you have for me today. This can't be, you can't just have me feeling sad all the time. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. And so I went back to some verses I heard before. Romans 8 28 says, He works all things for the good in those according to, according to His purpose that love Him. So if, if that's true, then what is good? What is good in this? Is what I would, I would literally be like, All right, this doesn't make any sense. And I go, Okay, God, if I don't see that, show it to me. And I'll roll with you for a bit, but I don't got much, I'm, I'm hurting. And then in that, I would go to Matthew where it says, blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. And in tears, I would say, God, I need to be comforted then. And, and what's so beautiful that I want people to realize is that God gets it. it when Christ knows how that feels to mourn, because when Lazarus died, the first thing he did was cry. He knew he was going to bring him back. But the first thing he thought is, my homie is dead mm -hmm. and I'm going to cry because it hurts. Mm -hmm. and, and that verse alone just made me go, okay, you get it. You know what this feels like. So if you know that, why? And that gave me time to figure out what is the good in this. And I pressed into that. And um, another verse in, in Psalms 37 where it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. In Ecclesiastes 3 that says that there's seasons in life. There's all these verses I would go to and then I watch. Maybe this is a season and that season continued to go down. It got it was like getting colder and colder for a while. Mm -hmm. And and all of a sudden, you know, it did kind of turn. And you know, I got to do American Ninja Warrior. Then I got to do Spartan Ultimate Team Challenge, another show. Team Ninja Warrior for two more seasons. I'm in the third season now. I speak at schools and churches all over the mainland now. But remember, as a team, as a village, as a community, you are to do this well. Everyone your hands in. Pull pack on three. In God's good grace, he, he's really given Grant a stage with American Ninja Warrior. He obviously is a, a worthy competitor on the program, but in addition, it's given Grant a whole new platform of notoriety. Um, to speak into young people's lives through, you know, church groups and even camps, you know, just Ninja Warrior camps, and uh, and Grant willingly does that and graciously does that. We went to a UH football game with him a couple weeks ago, and you can't walk three feet with that guy that he doesn't get stopped um, for a picture or. But he just is so well known, and he handles that very graciously uh, and and kindly with all the kids and adults that stop him, but. It's, it's very encouraging to see that he's using his popularity to really um, to glorify God and, and share his testimony that life's tough, but God's bigger. <laughs> And God gave me an image of just a house, this beautiful house built up. But then, as it says in His Word, the rains came, the streams rose, and it just beat down on this house. Well, the house, some of the roof came off, some of the top fell apart. But I went downstairs into my basement that was solid and foundation built well, and I rebuilt and came back up. And because I had that foundation, that my faith has been set since I was young, I, I had a place to go to. I felt mm -hmm. safe. I could rebuild. I had something to go off of. It wasn't everything just washed away and I was left alone. Right. Because I get what it feels like to, to want to commit suicide or to go to drugs and alcohol. Or, because in that hurt, everything gets lost. But if you have a foundation, you can stand back up and rebuild. And I, I want people to know that before they get there. Because right. I, I know what it feels like to get there. So I, the difference was God doesn't leave me alone because he's already claimed me as his. I've already chosen that I believe and that he says he'll never leave me or forsake me and I knew that. Mm -hmm. So he wouldn't let me believe a lie that's like, you know, I, maybe it is better just to kill yourself. Maybe it is better just go with drugs or alcohol or whatever to make you feel better because this is too tough. Right. And in that I chose, I chose faith instead 
and, and it, it really is the most satisfying thing and I want people to know that. Grant just really cares for the people around him and I think he has, a, I know he has the desire and the calling to share what he has experienced to help others in what they're going through, especially the young, you know, he has a, a real heart for the, for kids. So that whole, you know, after her passing and everything and, and then my grandmother and then my stepdad and this season of death is when I kind of decided to, to go for these things I always said and, you know, I, everyone's talking about their bucket list or whatever and like, I just call mine the rapture list because, you know, I just think, well, Christ can come back at any time. I might as well get this stuff in while I can and, uh, you know, I like American Ninja Warrior was the second thing I wanted to do and, um, and now I look at all these things I got to do and it, it's funny because the first thing was actually to go to Spain and do the running of the bulls. That was number one? That was number one. Oh my god. So immediately I flew out there with a buddy. Uh, <laughs> most dangerous thing I've ever done. So dumb. Um, almost got fully gored multiple times. We, we lived through that and then the next was American Ninja Warrior. So wow. got to do that and, and mm -hmm. yeah. And then, no, because there's some obvious things that people see on the list, but there's stuff that people don't know that like only God knows, and that's how I know delight yourself in the Lord and He'll give you the desires of your heart. Because for me to go to Alaska and, and cut three feet of ice down and go swimming in it in this remote village in Utilaclete, Alaska, it just so perfectly happened to be exactly what I needed. And while I was there, get to build an igloo, because I've always wanted to just build an igloo on my own. <laughs> Dude, you're insane! Yeah, I, these are weird little things that God knows I've always wanted to do. And, um, and you know, I also randomly got on the Ellen DeGeneres show. She, you know, I, I shouted her out, she tweeted to Was that on your bucket list? That was on the list! What the heck, yeah, man? Yeah, the Rapture list. Oh, the Rapture list, list. Rapture, 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 yeah, yeah. Rapture, Rapture list. list. So it was on there, I, and I, I, it's crazy because I get to grow, I get to think of new things now. I just keep thinking, I keep doing them. I mean, wow. I know there's some that, you know, That's I want to do that are coming and I just, I see them and I'm like, yeah, these, these are going to work out too. And so crazy stuff from, I want to be on WWF and like, or WWE is what it's called now and just like hit somebody with a chair or do something on stage and then, and then bail just one time. I want to, um, <laughs> I yes. want, you know, and just the more honest you are, the more that God's fully capable. So I've just been like, all right, what else do I want to do? Like, I want to, I want to like bump into Lecrae. Uh, I like to listen to Christian rap music and I like to rap and I, I'd like to just bump into him one day and not be like, oh, hey man, let's go to the studio. I just want to like right there with him be like, yo, let's rap real quick. And then be like, <laughs> and then just kick a quick freestyle and then be like, cool man. And, and just check in the middle of that. You know what I mean? And I, I just had to believe at some point we're going to cross paths. That's gonna Not happen. even a high buy. We just yeah. see each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He knows. He knows. Just walk around. Around. Yeah. <laughs> So weird little things like that, and um, I, you know, and then physical challenges. I want to, I want to finish a race first so that I break the tape. Oh, you know, I cut like across. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Oh, that'd be me. <laughs> and you know, maybe that'll happen. Maybe it's not. I got this huge list of stuff, but they're happening. And that every time one happens is the truth that delight yourself in the Lord help you the desires of your heart. And that doesn't mean delight yourself always just in the amazing spots where something good happens you go, praise you God. That means delight yourself when things really suck mm. and go, God, you are still good in this. You know, when I watch American Ninja Warrior, there was one point where you came off of one of the obstacles and it's like you had just barely did it. You barely made it mm. and you put your hands up. Thank yeah. you, Lord. Thank yeah. you, Lord. And I, I saw that. <laughs> and the announcers are so funny up top. You know, they're like, they're like, Hallelujah! You know, yeah, it was yeah. such a cool moment. Yeah. And I thought, I thought, dude, that is it. Yeah. That's the stuff that makes a difference. Because the whole world saw that. Yeah. The whole world sees you, a beast, taking on American Ninja Warrior, and then stopping to give glory to God. After that very first run, just you know, warmed my heart to see him give thanks to the Lord for his success in that run and uh, you know I've probably watched more American Ninja Warrior than I ever would <laughs> if it wasn't for a grant. I heard you say uh, to a, a group of kids at one point, maybe you were turning to the camera, I don't know what, but you, you said that one of your biggest goals is to get people up, get people going. I want to I want to see people move. They come to me, oh, I see all you on TV. Oh, I want to try this on my Instagram at Island Ninja on any social media account. You can just follow the videos I put up because I want to stir up activity, but I also want to stir up faith. I want people to know that like there's more to my story, and that when I tell them about the more that they get a personal relationship with Christ as well. So you're you're on American Ninja Warrior, mm -hmm. and I'm seeing you doing these 
unreal obstacles. What is going on in your head between you and God when you're out there? I mean, is, yeah. is he pushing you? Is he comforting you? What's going on? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, in the midst of it, usually it's a scramble. It's like, oh, oh, oh. but as you, as you mentioned, like the time I came off and I just immediately was like, oh, Thank you, Lord, because it'll naturally bring out those moments of tension and nerve. And when you're clean with everything you got, you can't be like, okay, whew. all right, Lord, I just want to pray in this moment that I just have the strength. Like you're, you're scrambling. You're just, you're just competing, which is wonderful. Right. But beforehand is what people don't see. The lead up, the the days and days and, and weeks and months of just preparation and, and asking God to heal my my hurts or make me understand, do I train today? Do I take rest? Do I eat well? Do I not? Like, what is the Ooh. whole, you know? And Wisdom. Then, yeah. And then also, most importantly, when you're walking up in that moment of like, you're stepping up on the platform, the producer's like, three, two. And the crowd and the lights are on. And you're like, I'm gonna pee my pants. Oh my In that moment, you really have to find that rest. And for me, it looks like before praying to him. And when I say, Okay, God, I'm doing this again. What am I doing? Why am I doing it? He just reminds me, that, like, this is all a gift. My body is my gift, and how I use it is just that's what I want to honor him with. And I want to have fun. I want to. Have, I want to be, you know, competitive. I want to win. But the reality is, if I lose. There's not that many people that get to do this television show. There's so many people that want to. It's a gift for me to even get up there. So I just remember, have fun, enjoy it. Don't ruin it because you got too stressed out and you blew it. Mm. And then I fall in the water and I'm cussing. And, and everyone's like, I thought it was Christian. And I'm like, them. I am, but you don't understand how hard I trained. And like, <laughs> you, know what I do? you don't know what I do. So much pressure. I haven't had ice cream in weeks. <laughs> And I don't want people to miss that because I'm too upset, you know? And so praying oh, ahead of time is right. a start. But then also when I get up, I, I like to do my little dance oh, and goof off. So I remember fun. like, okay, this is all for fun. I'm just here to just shake out the nerves. They're not gonna help you. You've already talked to God about this. Time to show up and do your thing. Well, I'll tell you what, Grant. You've got me motivated. Can I get in here and start moving around? I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Now we're here. We might as well. Okay. Well, I gotta get my workout clothes on because uh, I got clothes. Well, huh? you'll, you'll, you'll see. Oh great. Okay. I'll be right. I'll be great. right back. Okay. Okay. Cool. Oh man. <laughs> oh man. All right. <laughs> okay. I would figure I'm American from the '80s because yeah. and I'm ninja. Warrior. <laughs> yeah, you're killing it. I love the core of the socks, dude. You gotta be expressive. <laughs> dude, you're styling. Let's I'm ready this. to get this on. Let's do it. Let's do it. Push ups. We're gonna just get it right going. Yeah, get those going. All right. Now, if you can, come to the middle and go up on your fingertips. Come down. Oh. Now, if you can, take your pinkies off. Oh my gosh. All right. Oh my gosh. Now, if you can, take your other finger no off. No way. Three. There you go. If you can. Take another finger off. You're kidding me right now. This one may snap. No, no, you can do it like that too. Oh, okay. On the show, you're not allowed to use this. Oh, okay. But during training, you don't want slippy. You want good grip so that you can increase the muscle growth. Should I do more? Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Probably you should. should do more. Probably put some all over, under your arms and everything. Really? Nope. Oh. I'm doing my pull-ups in the office, so let's see. Uh, Grant, I think this is a little out of my league, man. It could be. You gotta use just your arms. Give it a shot. Use your legs. Kick your knees up. Go, go, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost. So learning how to really kick from the bottom to get up top. I'm gonna try one more time. Yeah. What is it? I see it. What is it? I'm ready. I'm ready to do anything but that. I don't think I got you on this one. Maybe just cartwheel. Maybe just cartwheel. There we go. There we go. That'll work. That'll work. In those tragedies, in those tough moments, my foundation was already set long, long ago. Because in that hurt, everything gets lost. But if you have a foundation, you can stand back up and rebuild. And I, I want people to know that before they get there. Because I, I know what it feels like to get there. So I, the difference was God doesn't leave me alone because he's already claimed me as his. I've already chosen that I believe and that he says he'll never leave me or forsake me and I knew that. And in that I chose, I chose faith instead and, and it, it really is the most satisfying thing and I want people to know that.